And welcome back to 101 East. We're talking this week about blogging in general and blogging in Malaysia in particular. I'm joined in the studio by Patrick Teo, a full-time blogger in Malaysia. Dr. Shad Salim Farooqi is a professor of law here in Malaysia. And Cherry and George is a lecturer in journalism at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Gentlemen, thanks for staying with us. Cherry and George, let me come to you for a moment. We were talking moments ago uh, about the damage that bloggers can cause and the damage uh, can cause by people who don't tell the truth. Now, uh, in your current capacity as a lecturer in media studies, how damaging is it that freedom of speech can contain misleading, erroneous information? Well, obviously there are um, situations, real and uh, hypothetical, that would lead us to uh, conclude quite rightly uh, that freedom, freedom of expression can have severe downsides. Uh, and I think every society would want to mitigate it somehow. How far uh, does that principle go, though? I mean, if, if uh, Oprah Winfrey, who has an enormous platform for her opinions and her perspectives, puts out uh, uh, some information which is erroneous, does that, does that come into the same ballpark that we're speaking of here? Well, I, I think the problem can be uh, uh, looked into like this, that uh, there are defenses available in the law. So, for example, if it's defamatory, if there's a charge of defamation, truth is an absolute defense. It doesn't have to be 100% true, substantially true. Let's, Courts will decide. Let's look the at a case in Malaysia that, that, mm. uh, that came up uh, many years ago, the case of, of Malaysia Kini, uh, or the, the individuals that set up Malaysia Kini. Stephen Gann was a journalist in Malaysia who wrote an article about Semenye, uh, a, a, a camp in Malaysia where apparently atrocities were being committed under the, under the nose of the government. That information was not allowed to, to hit the media. It was suppressed by the government. It subsequently did come to the attention of the media through other means and it's still a case in point. Now, is it irresponsible for a, a, a journalist or a blogger or a, a government official to put out information like that? There are a lot of assumptions being made by both governments and, uh, and ministers and courts of law that assume that bloggers are stupid, that they have no minds of their own, that whatever you put on the net in a blog, they will say, oh, OK, that's true. I mean, I think that's a very dangerous assumption. And, and uh, it can lead to overblown cases like what we've just seen. Uh, and. I was just going to say before we took the, the break that perhaps this Jeff Uy and Rocky case is actually a covert operation by, by some authorities to instill fear in, to, into, the, into the minds of bloggers like this is going to happen. But if we s took a step back and really look at the case, I would ignore it totally. I wouldn't go out to the courts to support it. I, I would tell everybody reason. to let's chill it. Mm. Patrick and not raises, give them uh, the opportunity to. Interesting mm. uh, point that I think is valid across Asia and probably across the world mm -hmm. that uh, many societies that uh, do not respect uh, freedom of expression uh, tend to use as an excuse you know, the harm that can be caused by information. And often the, uh, the, the uh, scenarios really are exaggerated. And I think, as you say, the, um, uh, the intelligence of the ordinary viewer or reader is often severely underestimated. Right. It's often assumed that uh, uh, just because a certain rumor comes out, comes think out that the whole society will collapse. Mm. Uh, let, let, me, let me just put out the, the idea here that is this all just a storm in a teacup? The, uh, the, the Stephen Gann and the Malaysia Kini example is quite a, an instructive one because 10 years ago, when Malaysia Kini uh, started causing waves in the Malaysian political I think environment. Stephen Gann and. So can, can, I, can I just finish the thought? That website is now almost mainstream. Uh, I, I was in Dr. Mahathir Mohamed's office only recently, and he has on his desk a printout of the website in which they called him uh, Newsmaker of the Year, and he apparently was quite proud of it. Do you think in, in years to come, blogs will also be regarded simply as mainstream, uh, and this, this will all have passed? I think there'll always be a need for marginal media, because the mainstream, I hope, will not be able to encompass the sheer diversity that is any of our societies. Uh, I mean, I would worry if uh, everyone could fit into the mainstream, because that would suggest that it's not a very interesting will society. Will blogs become mainstream? I suppose they would be they would, to a certain extent, become uh, uh, alternative mainstream. But what, what is important to me is that 
Other than mainstream media like Al Jazeera or newspapers and magazines, which, which are owned by you know, companies and individuals, blogs represent a voice which is totally un, untethered to anyone. It's yes. totally free. And because of that, uh, I think eventually blogs and the internet will become a voice which may rival or even supersede what, uh, what information people read or glean from mainstream media and believe. How yeah? much of a threat to the blog do you think is this Malaysian proposal that bloggers should register with the government? Bloggers should... I don't think that poses any problems at all. Because I'm a, I'm a firm believer in bloggers uh, standing by what they say and what they write. If you're an anonymous blogger, I don't even bother to read you, no matter what you're writing about. Because some, some days ago, somebody mentioned, oh, there's this guy who blogs and he, he writes about social and political issues and he's, his writings are very, very interesting to read. We must all go and read his blogs. I said, who is he? Oh, he can't reveal his name because if he does, his job will be in jeopardy. If you want to say something, you put your name to it and you stand by what you say. If you're not prepared to do that, then you don't... Well, the, although the reality, though, is that in many Asian countries, uh, individuals who quite rightly are prepared to stand up for what they say, and unpleasant things happen to them that shouldn't happen to them. Uh, Singapore and Malaysia, frankly, are, are quite uh, moderate on that scale. I mean, other countries you can get disappeared or imprisoned or shot, yeah, not because... I think you know, that's because to too few of them want to be put in that position. And if one person c comes out of the closet, sure, you can shoot them. But if 10,000 people are out there, I would like to see any well, government try I guess, to do... I guess my point is merely that, yes, I mean, I'm a firm believer that in the long run, we should be aiming for a blog sphere that believes in accountability. Mm -hmm. But what, mm -hmm. it, what, what, what but we don't think, have at the moment is, is, uh, the, is an, uh, an answer to the issues that the professor raised, which is uh, whether there is truth and whether there is accountability in law. Because at the end of the day, a number of these problems that are being discussed are simply differences of opinion. And a difference of opinion in a country like Malaysia could end up with prison sentences, could end up with, with severe repercussions. This was coming back to the issue. We were talking about the need for restraints on government's power. I think by the same token, since bloggers may well become mainstream and have a tremendous power at their command, I think there's a need for responsibility there too. So I totally agree with you. There is a need for accountability. If we were to look at the issue from the perspective of those uh, who were hit by false accusations in a blog story. And I think we would have to say that there is nothing seriously wrong about saying, uh, if you write this story, um, you must identify yourself. What about the perspective of the blogger, the man in the street? And Singapore is interesting here. In Singapore, there is a speaker's corner. Uh, modeled, I assume, after the one in London, uh, there is an area there where people are theoretically allowed to stand up and speak their mind. In practice, they're not allowed to do so. Is there much of a difference between a man standing up on a street corner and saying what he believes and uh, the same man or woman putting those opinions on the blog? And should they both be equally controlled? I think there's a difference. When it's a man speaking at the speaker's corner, basically he's addressing himself to the audience that is willingly there. But when you are on the blog and actually with these days you're able to network with others your reach is fantastic if you want to spread defamation does that as far as you're concerned does that actually make a difference I mean if you could attract 10,000 people to speakers corner and you get trapped 10,000 readers to your blog is the issue the same yeah I think the issue is the same well not quite because I think uh, uh, one thing you cannot control uh, on the internet is the context in which something is heard uh, so I think last year we had a classic example, uh, not on the internet, but in the mainstream media, uh, with the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad cartoons. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Danish context, many Muslim Danes would say that it was actually within uh, the culture of Denmark to have such debates, but taken out of context, it was explosive. And, and let, 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 but with the last couple of minutes that we have, uh, that's an interesting final issue brought up. Control, you seem to think, is important. Freedom is what you seem to think is important. Quick couple of words on why control is less important than the ability to say what you like. No, I didn't say that freedom is more important than control or the other way around. What I'm saying is let us, let us all 
look at blogging and the internet and the voice of the bloggers as something which people have been doing for hundreds of years. What is blogging about? Blogging is merely a group of people sitting around a coffee shop table talking about issues that affect their daily lives. Not all bloggers are interested in, in the general election, in what the administration is doing uh, about the freedom of the press and, and so on and so forth. Not, not many people are interested in global warming or global finances, but they're all interested in community. This is what's happening to me in my daily life. I'm not liking it. I'm voicing it. If you're the politician, you're the member of parliament in charge of my constituency, this is I want, what I want to tell you. And I'm going to try and get people to support me to tell you my case. And that all right. is blogging to me. And that's a very good place to leave the show. Gentlemen, thank you all very much indeed for talking to us today. Thank my thanks to my guests, Cherry and George, Patrick Teo, and Shad Salim Farooqi. And from all of us here at 101 East, it's goodbye.